Hey guys, my name is Frank. This is the Poth on Programming video log, and today I'm going to show you how to create a HTTPS server, secure server, in Ubuntu using Node.js. So I've defined a little application here. I have three files. I have my Node.js server file. I have my index.html, which is just my homepage. It's the page you see right here. Really, really simple. Just has one resource, index.css, which is defined here. It's just a CSS file. You can check all this out in the source. I'm going to link it in the description. So really all I'm going to go over is the server. I've set up all my certificates. I'm going to go over this stuff in a different tutorial. Just know that you need to have all three of these boxes green lit in order to have this work the way you want it to. But I'll go over how to create the certificates that get this everything green and you get the secure green lock. I'll go over all that in another tutorial. But for now, we're just going to talk about the node code to get this stuff running. So we're going to be using the terminal for this. I have my server running right now. I'm going to stop it by hitting control C. As you can see, I'm in the working directory of my project. And if I ls to show the contents of my folder, I have my index.html, my server file, uh, my SSL folder that holds all my certificates and stuff. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, the index.css. So basically, I'm in my working directory, and what I want to do is use nodes, node mon function, or you could just use node, but I like node mon because it outputs all these handy um, just lines that tell you what's going on. So I'm going to use node mon, and I'm going to say node mon server.js, which is the name of my node server file. I'm going to hit enter, and it's going to start my server, and I have a console.log that outputs server started when my server starts in my server code. So that's how you start it. If I come over here and try to boot up this page when my server's not running, I get a this site can't be reached error message. I'm going to come back in here, restart my server, and refresh. And as you can see, my server is serving files. Now I get an error message when I, when I run the page because I have not defined a fav icon. So all this is saying is, the server can't find the fav icon file. I was just lazy, didn't feel like defining a fav icon. Anyway, now I'm actually going to get into the code. So up here, I defined some modules required to run this server. First one is fs, which is just file system, short for file system. It's used for reading and writing to files in Node.js and working with the file system. So just working with directories and stuff. HTTPS. That module is responsible for creating an HTTPS server, which takes some options for the server. The HTTPS server takes options like where your certificates are located, your secure certificates, and your private key files and all that stuff to get a secure connection. And it will also take your actual request and response server code for writing pages or parsing web pages from files. Lastly, we have the path module, and what that does is it just helps us work with paths a little bit. It's going to help us with these MIME types in creating our response headers. So when we come over here to our index.html, when the browser tries to get this resource, resource, excuse me, when the browser tries to get this resource, the index.css resource, it'll throw it to the browser, You're not the browser, the server. The server will create a response header, so the browser knows how to parse the file. And in here, we just have the MIME types of different files that we want to be able to use in our website. So I've just defined a couple common things that you might want to use in a website. But really, all I need is CSS and HTML because I'm not using any other file types. Down here, I have my options, which my server is going to use when I use HTTPS to create server. I'm going to hand it this, the options object. PFX is just a value you pass to the server and you hand it the certificate file your certificate authority a pfx file contains your certificate it contains i think your certificate signing request as well as your private key and it's all encrypted so it's kind of handy otherwise you have to hand options a certificate file and your private key file if you use pfx you can also export your pfx certificate to android devices so I'm using PFX because it's a smaller code footprint, and I can also use the same certificate, the PFX certificate, 
in my Android device. So that's pretty handy. And passphrase is just a passphrase for your PFX, PFX certificate. So you'll actually define that when you create the certificate. But I'll show you that in the next tutorial I'm talking about. So anyway, down here we have the HTTPS command to create our server. This is basically the same inside code that you would have inside of a HTTP server. The only difference with HTTPS is that you hand it this, uh, this options code here. That's really the only difference. Um, first, if we're just going to hand our browser a request for just the website name. So for example, if you want to request facebook.com, facebook.com isn't going to serve you a page called www.facebook.com. It's going to be more like www.facebook.com slash homepage.html. So it would be weird if you were going to type facebook.com slash your homepage, but it's not weird to just type facebook.com and have the servers generate your page, your specific page for you. So what this does is it allows you to type in just this code here, not code, but this URL, and it will hand you the index page. You can get the same effect though if you actually include the full link. So if I do index.html, it'll give me the same page. It's just, it takes longer to type. So we wanna take that question out. So we just check to see if the URL that the user has passed in is empty meaning it just contains the domain name or the IP address of where you want to go. And if it is empty, we attach index.html, which is our home page. So hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that wasn't too shaky an explanation there for you. The next thing we do is we read our request URL. We attach our dir name. All dir name is is the directory that we're getting these files from. So say I request my request URL, say that's index.html. We're still going to want to know where we're getting that file from. So dir name just holds our file root. So if I go back to my terminal, I can see it's searching for my fave icon file inside of this big long directory path. So this whole thing is my underscore underscore dir name value when I'm serving this content off of my own server on my own computer. And this would be the requested URL. So between the two, you can actually find files in your file system. So you want to hand fs.readfile the path location of your file, and then you also want to hand it this function that is the callback function, and it gives you control over the error and the content that is returned when fs reads a file. So if there is an error, it will be stored in this error value that we're getting from our callback function. And all we have to do is, I don't know, you can make exceptions and stuff and you can handle your errors nicely or you can just output to the console whatever that error is. And as you can see, I just do console.log error and add the error message. And that's why you get error. This is the part that I defined here in my string, just error. So you get that and then it also adds the error code stored in the error parameter there. And then if there's no error, we go ahead and we parse our content. So response.writehead is what we need our MIME types list for here. And if we come back down here, scroll over a little bit, we want to hand write head for write header, we want to hand that 200, which is the code for okay, everything, everything came through okay, so we're good to go. And then we hand it an object that contains the content type header string. And we use the path module to get the extension from our request URL. So if our request URL was index.html, this would basically get the HTML portion. And then we're going to search the MIME types object for HTML to get our MIME type. So if I come back up here, that bit of code down there would have returned if I was searching the request.url and it was index.html, it would split the HTML from the index dot portion of the string and it would search MIME types for HTML and return the value attached to HTML, which is text or HTML. If it was dot CSS, I would get text or CSS. 
So that's how we create our headers. And it's pretty simple. It's not too difficult. And after we create a header, we write the content to the response with response.write, and we hand it the content parameter up here. And then after all that is done, we do response.end, and that sends everything back to our browser. And it parses everything on the page. So that is your basic server. This code is the same for an HTTP server as it is for an HTTPS server. The only difference is HTTPS gets options to check our certificates to see if we have a secure connection. And then the last thing we do is call server.listen. Server is the variable that I'm storing my HTTPS server in. So I come down here after I create my server and I just say server.listen and I hand it the port in the IP address that I want to listen on, which is why if I come up here and I type HTTPS 192.168.0.101 and then my port, um, that's why I can communicate with my server because I told it to listen on this IP address and this port. And this is a callback function that just is called back whenever the server is actually started. So that, in 80 lines of code with lots of white space and comments, is how to create a functional HTTPS server in Node.js on Ubuntu with the terminal. So pretty useful stuff. So I hope you guys learned something. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have more content like this coming. And definitely stay tuned for the next part of this tutorial that I'm doing, which is going over how to create a valid certificate chain. And I'm going to go over how you create this PFX file right here, which is vital for, you know, serving up secure content on, on your, uh, your desktop browser, as well as your Android phone browser. I don't know much about iOS, so I'm not going to get into that, but I'm going to show you how to run this stuff from your own personal server at home and get this green secure lock on your Android device as well as your desktop browser. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.